Alright, what's up everybody? My name is John Hammond, and in this video we're going to be cranking out the solution to that spelling states challenge that I released just the other day. So it's asking us, uh, well, there are 50 United States, and each of them contains at least one of two particular letters, one being a consonant and the other being a vowel. What are these letters and what states don't use them? So to actually work with this, I'm actually going to be using a Python library that has all of the United States in them. So I think it's, uh, if I just Google Python United States, it will show us this US module. Okay, cool, it does show it down at the bottom, or at least in one of those results I saw earlier. It does have a package that is full of United States states, territories, postal abbreviations, other information, blah, blah, blah. We just need to be able to get the state names easily and real quickly. So if you don't have that installed, you should be able to just sudo pip install us, enter your password, and then it should be able to crank it out for you. Mine's already done. So let's get started and actually import that module. Import us. And you can access all the states I'm sorry, just by that module name, and then capital states. So it just cranks it all out for us. And we'll work through it as a list. So let's actually get those in a working form. Let's say states. I'll do a little bit of list comprehension here. We will actually take the state that we retrieve for state in us.states. And that's actually just going to be, we want to be able to like actually turn this to a lowercase stuff. So if I were to print out states, right now it's just all of it in the state form that the module works for us, but we just want it as a string. So I would want the lowercase version of it, but it's going to have a problem when it's not in a string form. So let's cast it to a string. And now they're all lowercase. That works just fine, so we can work with them. But they all have, um, you'll notice, the space characters in them if they happen to be multiple words like New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico. So let's actually remove all of those space characters with the simple replace line. So now we've got all the states working for us just fine. And now let's crank out the vowels and consonants. So we, since we know that, that is the other data we want to be working with. I know those vowels are A, E, I, O, U. And now we have the vowel set. Let's actually get the consonants. We're going to want those out of the entire alphabet. So let's import string as well, just so we can easily work with all of the alphabet. I'm going to use string.ascii lowercase, and I'm just setting this to a constants variable right now, but we're going to replace and take all the vowels out of our consonant string. So for vowel in vowels, what we can do is we can say consonants totally equals consonants um, once it's been replaced with the vowel that we're currently looking at with nothing. So now we can print out vowels and consonants and they should be A, E, I, O, U and then all of the consonants without the vowels in them. That works just fine for us. Now since we have all the possibilities of vowels and consonants, we're actually going to be able to wanna, we're going to want to be able to like piece them together one by one. And I'm going to actually do that with I'll show you. It's part of the iter tools module. It should be the product of a list. Python iter tools product. Product will reduce the Cartesian product. So if we put together two lists, it'll give us all the possibilities of those two kind of put together. And uh, I'll let you look more into that if you need to, but. In our case, it does exactly what we need it to by kind of jamming together all the possible consonants and vowels. So let's get that module. Let's, from iter tools, let's just import product because that's the only function we need. So now that we've generated the consonants and the vowels, we can actually start to loop through them as possibilities. So for consonant and vowel in product of consonants and vowels, now we can see, for one thing, are they all part of the states that we're looking through? So for state in states, we're looping through every single state. If the consonant that we're looking at currently, since we're looping through a bunch of them here, I'll actually just print these out so you get an understanding of what it is that I'm talking about. 
We'll see it in the big list here. I can pull the screen up. It's going to go through all the possibilities of the consonants with all the possibilities of the vowels. And it's just looping through all of them. So we're also going to be looking through the states for each one of these possibilities, though, just like I had uh, started to type before in this other for loop. If the consonant is in the state, or the vowel is in the state, we're using or because remember the prompt says it could be either at least one of two particular letters, one being the consonant and the other being a vowel. So if the consonant or the vowel is in the state, then we know we've got it. We know we got one success. But we want to be able to have that success for 47 of the 50 United States, right? It says all but three of the 50 United States have this. So let's actually keep track of how many that we've currently found, currently that, we, that we've actually noted to work. So let's keep a variable, uh, I guess, restarting every time that we're looking through these states. And if we found one, we can increment our found variable. And if not... Well, we'll know that that's one of the states, one of the three, hopefully, if it actually finds the constant vowel pair that we need, one of the three that does not contain the vowel and the consonant. So let's actually keep an array of missing states, since that, of course, is going to be updating every time with our constant vowel pairing. Else, missing states can append the current state we're looking at, and since it's lowercase, uh, let's actually bring it back to uppercase, so we'll just call state title on it. And now, at the end of our loop, we should have, hopefully, a found variable filled up all the way to the total number of occurrences that we saw with that constant and, and vowel pairing being in all of the states. So, since we have all but three of the 50 United States containing these, that's obviously going to be the whole 50 states minus 3. So we should have 47 possible things that we found, right? So if found is equal to 47, then, well, we know we've got the right pairing of the consonant and vowel. So we can print out what consonant we're looking at. Consonant. We'll do the same for the vowel that we're looking at. And we'll actually look at all the missing states as well. I'm just going to put a little, uh, some spaces in here. And missing states right now is an array, but let's just join these with a comma so it looks kind of nice. And with that, we should be good. Let's try and run this. Hey, okay, we got an answer for us. The constant we found was N. Looks like the vowel that we found was A. And the missing states were Mississippi, Missouri, and Ohio. Those do not have occurrence of N or A. And that looks like there are three. Looks like it found apparently all the other 47 states did have an N and an A. So what we just wrote, our solution seems to work just fine. What we did was we just took vowels, we took all the consonants, and then we started to hunt for every possibility of both that consonant and that vowel with all the all the different possibilities between one consonant and one vowel. And we checked, is it in every single state? Or at least, is it in 47 different states? If it is, tell us what that pairing is. Tell us what consonant and vowel we were just looking at, and what states did we miss? What ones did it not find it in? And that was Mississippi, Missouri, and Ohio. So, cool. <laughs> we did it. That is the solution for the spelling states challenge. Uh, we could, of course, return and break out of this because we're done. So that we don't have to keep looping. Just add a little bit more optimization to our code. But that's it. That's all we had to do. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. I thought it was a little bit of a kind of clever solution. Also, using the U.S. module to get all the states listings, using the Tools module to take the Cartesian product, and getting, like, a combination of both uh, consonants and vowels. I hope that was pretty cool. I hope you guys liked this one. So, uh, thanks for watching, and, hey, I'll see you in the next, uh, in the next challenge.